This is a 64-year-old male patient who presented with uh, criti critical limb ischemia of his right limb. He had rest pain for one month and showed uh, two small ulcers of his right uh, second and third toes which had been present for just over two weeks. He is uh, non-diabetic, uh, smokes 20 cigarettes a day and his blood pressure is 160 by 95. The duplex scan was done which showed diffuse disease in the SFA and the popliteal artery. There was only one run of vessel which was the peroneal artery. The anterior tibial and posterior tibial arteries were occluded. A small anterior tibial artery was detected in the foot. The angiogram show, confirmed the findings of the duplex scan. It was proposed to uh, undertake recanalization of the anterior tibial artery with subintimal angioplasty. The occlusion was 30 centimeters long of the anterior tibial artery. The materials used for such procedures are a 5 French uh, 3 millimeter diameter by 2 centimeter long balloon catheter, uh, which has 120 centimeters of shaft. The guide wire used is 0.035 and hydrophilic with a curved tip. The technique uh, involves, first of all, to enter the anterior tibial artery using a curved uh, wire. Once the anterior tibial artery has been entered, the wire is manipulated into a loop and it is this loop that is used to progress through the length of the occlusion. The uh, loop is pushed forward and the balloon catheter follows the loop. When there is any resistance in the progression of the catheter, the balloon catheter is dilated uh, retrogradely in order to remove uh, any resistance. This allows the balloon catheter to move further. The whole length of the occlusion was therefore crossed and re-entry was achieved again using the loop in the guide wire and the whole length of the artery was then dilated using the balloon catheter. The procedure was successful and as a result the patient's ulcers healed and the critical limb ischemia was relieved. Uh, the duplex scan was uh, repeated in six, month, six weeks time and this confirmed that the uh, anterior tibial artery was still patent. The arteriogram confirms that there is one run of vessel which is through the peroneal artery. There is a small stump of the anterior tibial artery and at the foot level a small anterior tibial artery is present. Therefore we are going to recanalize the full length of the anterior tibial artery. A curved hydrophilic guide wire is used uh, under a road map so we can see where the origin of the anterior tibial artery is. The wire is followed by a small balloon catheter which is 2 centimeters long and 3 millimeters in diameter. Entry into the anterior tibial artery is done using the curved tip of the guide wire and after perseverance the wire eventually will enter into the anterior tibial artery. Once the anterior tibial artery has been entered in, the aim is to create a loop in the guide wire, which fortunately it has done by itself. The loop is absolutely essential in order to negotiate the first bend uh, at, at the origin of the anterior tibial artery so that uh, the wire will not perforate. Uh, the balloon catheter follows the wire and if there is any resistance uh, it is dilated in order to reduce resistance so that it can, it can move forward. The loop is then advanced forward and as you can see it uh, moves fairly easily and the balloon catheter follows it. The balloon is also dilated backwards once again to uh, remove any possible resistance to progression forward. We are now in the middle third of the anterior tibial artery and uh, the loop is advanced forward. As you can see the loop moves fairly easily and at this point the balloon also moves relatively easily. Um, 
Once the loop is moved forward, the balloon follows back in order to provide support. And at this point, the balloon has difficulty in progressing forward. As you could see, the loop could move forward easily, but the balloon was uh, not progressing forward, so we start dilating backwards once again to eliminate any resistance so that the balloon can then move forward. Now that the resistance has been eliminated, the balloon has progressed forward. So once again, uh, this time gently, we start uh, moving the loop forward. A small amount of contrast is now used to confirm the intraluminal position. We get the loop back in again, and once again, very important that the loop is maintained, particularly at the ankle level, so as to negotiate the bend into the distal anterior tibial artery. Uh, the loop is maintained short so as not to cause a perforation at this level. Re-entry is normally made with a loop in the guide wire but in this case it was not entering uh, easily so it was decided not to pursue it at this point and as you can see with the contrast it was freely flowing into the vessel so we decide to dilate the whole length of the anterior tibial artery. These dilatations are now more definitive, therefore high pressure is used in the balloon up to 10 to 12 atmospheres, but very short of, uh, inflations of 5 seconds or so. When the whole length of the artery has been dilated, the balloon is once again advanced forward, back into the distal position, and checked with contrast to ensure flow. Once the whole length of the anterior tibial artery has been dilated and the balloon brought down to the foot level, contrast is now injected to see washout. Uh, the contra contrast is flowing freely and forwards through the whole length of the anterior tibial artery. However, when the angiogram is done, we can see that the flow in the anterior tibial artery is not as fast as the peroneal artery, and this is shown at the foot level as well. Uh, since proper re-entry was not made with a loop, we now, under heavy magnification and roadmap, look at the distal end again and the straight end of the wire has this time achieved uh, uh, entry into the distal anterior tibial artery. Ballooning is done to tidy up the distal end and now we can see that the contrast is freely flowing and the distal anterior tibial artery appears to be a good vessel. The final angiogram shows free flow in the anterior tibial artery which is actually faster than the peroneal artery and this is confirmed in the upper leg as well. So now there is good hemodynamics and therefore a good final result.